In this video, we're going to cover some of the command line tools that come with ROS and let us work with our ROS system. To get started using ROS on the command line, we need to talk about setup files. ROS uses a lot of environment variables, and rather than polluting your entire system with those environment variables when you install it, ROS gives you setup files that you can run whenever you're ready to use a ROS environment, but otherwise don't get in the way of your normal system. The main setup file that ROS provides will set up the environment for everything you need to use all of the packages and tools that you've installed from apt. When we get to writing our own packages and code, we'll have other setup files associated with that work. To use a setup file, we need to run the source command. This is something we'll have to do every time we start a new terminal, because every new terminal is a separate instance of the command line shell application. So to source my main ROS setup file, I'm going to run source and then give it the path opt ROS noetic setup.bash. The noetic part here is the name of the ROS distribution that I'm using. You can have multiple ROS distributions installed on the same system, and so you can pick which one you're running by sourcing the correct setup file for that installation. Running this command, I won't get any output, but my environment is now ready to run ROS commands. And if I tab complete on the phrase ROS, I will see a bunch of commands that start with ROS. And the fact that those can be found and exist lets me know that my system is set up and ready to go. Now we talked in the last video about needing to run the ROS master every time we boot up our machine and want to use ROS. And we talked about using the ROS core command to do that. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and start up the ROS master in the background by running ROS core space ampersand. And we see some output that gets printed out that lets us know that the ROS core and ROS master started up successfully. And if we hit enter, we will get our prompt back. But the ROS master is still running in the background, so we don't need to worry about it anymore. The first ROS command we're going to talk about is ROS run. It helps us run ROS nodes. ROS nodes are just regular applications. So we could go find the executable on our system and try to run it like any other application, and it would run fine. But those executables are spread out in a lot of different places because of the different organization tools that ROS uses. ROS run helps us run commands just based on their names without having to go and find where they are installed on our system. To find out how to use ROS run, we're going to start by asking it. Most Linux commands and all ROS commands will let you pass in a help flag, either dash H or double dash help, and they'll print out a little bit of documentation that explains how to use them. So in this case, I'm going to type in ROS run dash H. And here we'll see a little usage dialog prints out that says, in order to use ROS run, we need to use the command ROS run and then give it a package name and an executable name. It will go search that package for that executable, and if it finds it, it'll run it. We can, of course, give other optional arguments enclosed in these hard brackets, but those aren't required for the basic usage. To give us an interesting ROS system to work with, I'm going to run TurtleSim. TurtleSim is just a little 2D basic simulator that gives us a turtle that we can move around the screen. In order to launch TurtleSim, I'm going to use the command ROS run TurtleSim, which is the name of the package, TurtleSim node, which is the name of the simulator node I'm trying to launch. If I click enter, I get a little bit of printout as the node boots up, and I get my simulator window, which is just a big blue square with my little turtle in the middle. So now we've got a ROS node running, and we used ROS run to get it up there. I want to leave this node running while I run the rest of the commands, so I'm going to open up a new tab in this terminal using Control shift t Opening a new tab starts a new terminal session, so I need to source my setup file again. Source opt ROS noetic setup.bash. Now the next command I want to talk about is ROS node. ROS node, as the name implies, lets us interact with and query information about the nodes currently running in our system. So let's run ROS node H, and we can see that this command gives us a set of subcommands we can use to do specific actions with nodes. The first useful one I'd like to cover is list. If I run ROS node list, I will get a list of the names of all the nodes currently running. Right now, this just features TurtleSim, our simulator node that we started, and ROS out, which is part of ROS core. ROS node info 
will give me more details about a node, and I have to give it the name. So I'm going to go ahead and ask it for info about our turtle sim node. In the output of that command, we can see some information about the node. We can see what topics it's publishing to, what topics it's subscribing to, what services it exposes, we'll talk about services later, and what connections it's made. Remember that advertising and subscribing to topics does not necessarily mean that an actual network connection has been made yet. There needs to be other nodes to connect to in order for that to happen. Because we're not running any other nodes, the only connection our Turtlesome node has is back to that ROSout node that's part of ROS Core. The last subcommand we'll talk about for ROS node is ROS node kill. This command lets us send a shutdown request to a ROS node. Now this isn't something you need to use often. ROS nodes as regular applications can be shut down normally. For example, with this TurtleSim node, I could just close this window and that would shut down this node. Or I could press Control C in the terminal and that would also shut it down. But sometimes ROS nodes get lost in the background and it's nice to be able to have a way to send a shutdown request without finding where that ROS node is actually running. To use it, I would just type in ROS node kill and then the name of the node. I'm not going to run it this time because I want to keep TurtleSim running. The last command I want to review in this video is called ROS topic. So we can give ROS topic the help flag to see what subcommands it has available for us. And we see that it has a long list of subcommands that let us interact with topics in ROS. We're going to talk about five of those subcommands here. The first two are just like ROS node. I can use ROS topic list to see a list of topics currently in our system. Note that these are the topics for all of the nodes combined, not just any individual node. I can use ROS topic info on a specific topic, let's say turtle one pose, and I can see information about that specific topic. In this case, I can see what the publishers and subscribers are for that topic. I have one publisher, which is my TurtleSim node, and since I have no other nodes running, I have no subscribers. If I ROS topic info the command vel topic, I'll see the opposite is true. My TurtleSim node is subscribing to that topic, but nobody's publishing to it. Now, if I want to see the messages that are being sent on a topic, I can use ROS topic echo and give it a topic name. So here, let's use ROS topic echo turtle one slash pose. And when I run this, it's just going to print out a stream of messages that are coming across that topic. Every line that has three dashes in it is the start of a new message on the topic. And then within that message, we can see lines that show us the field of that message. So every field is the field name colon the value for that field. In this case, we can see that the messages on this pose topic have five fields, x, y, theta, linear velocity, and angular velocity. The x, y, and theta give us the position of our turtle in our window, and then linear and angular velocity tell us about how the turtle is actually moving at that point. But because our turtle isn't moving, none of these values are changing. So how can we be sure that messages are actually getting sent on this topic? Well, for that, we have another subcommand, ROS topic HZ, or ROS topic Hertz. If we run ROS topic Hertz, and then the turtle one pose command, it's going to print out information on the frequency for that topic. And we can see that despite the fact that none of these values are changing, messages are being sent on that topic at just over 60 times a second, or 60 hertz. We also get some of the statistical information for those messages. Min frequency, max frequency, standard deviation, and the window, or the number of messages that are being used to calculate those statistics. The ROS topic hertz is a great command for when you want to make sure that messages are actually being published onto a topic without actually caring about the content of those messages. With ROS topic echo and ROS topic hertz combined, we have a pretty good tool set for reading messages that other nodes are publishing to. The last subcommand I want to talk about is ROS topic pub, which lets us publish our own messages onto topics. ROS topic pub takes in a number of arguments. The first one is the name of the topic we want to publish to. In this case, let's do turtle one command vel. This will let us move our turtle. The next argument is the type of message we're going to send. Because every topic has a specific associated message type, ROS can actually fill this in for us using tab completion. So if I just tap tab twice, it will give me the next two arguments. The type of the message, in this case it's a geometry twist message, 
and the data that's actually going into that message formatted as a YAML string. Now we can use the arrow keys to go back up and edit the contents of the message we're actually sending. In this case, I'm going to go into the linear X field and give it a positive value so that we can move our turtle forward. If I hit enter to run this, our turtle starts moving forward and takes one step forward. This is because by default, Ross Topic Pub only sends one message at a time. So our turtle receives one message and takes one step forward. We can hit control C to kill Ross Topic Pub. Now, what if we want to send continuous messages? We want to repeat the same message multiple times. Well, to do that, we can give it the rate at which we want to send those messages using the rate flag or dash R and then the frequency. So let's say I want to send one of these messages every second. I will just give dash R one. And now when I run it, our turtle will take a step and then keep taking more steps because it's getting a new command every second until it hits the wall and can't go any further. So now using Ross Topic Pub, we can move our turtle around. I can, for example, send it backwards for one step by changing the linear x velocity to negative one and taking out my rate command. And that will send my turtle backwards one step. And if I set the angular z velocity to a non-zero number, my turtle will turn while it moves, sending it in a circle. And if I want it to finish that circle, I just give it the frequency at which I want it to move. And now I've got my turtle running in a little circle. Now, if you really are just trying to send a one-off message, another useful flag for Ross Topic Pub is the once flag, double dash once. That will send one command and then exit so that you don't have to kill it yourself and you can get right back to using the terminal for other things. So running that command again with dash dash once sends our turtle backwards for one step and then kills the Ross Topic command. That's all for this video. We've covered what setup files are and how you need to run them for every new terminal instance. We talked about how ROS run helps us start nodes. We saw how ROS node helps us ask questions and control the nodes that are currently running in our system. And we saw how ROS topic lets us interact with topics in our currently running ROS system. In the next video, we're going to see how to do a lot of these same things using a graphical application.